A little over two months ago, we collectively suddenly realized that a recession was likely off the table. And since then, the economically sensitive stocks, the so-called cyclicals, have been roaring higher. Take Dana Incorporated which makes propulsion and energy management systems for vehicles and other machines. Think transmissions, gearboxes, specialized axles. No one else is making these, believe me, and many more components. After spending a couple years lost in the wilderness thanks to the auto supply chain woes that everybody had, recession fears, Dana stock has shot up roughly 37% just since the end of May. A week and a half ago, the cut reported a great quarter, solidly better than expected revenue, massive 20 cent earnings beat off 17 cent basis, while management raised their full year guidance across the board. But the stock barely budged. In fact, it's down 6% since the quarter. Uh, although I think that's largely because it had already run up so much going into earnings. That does happen. Don't take it from me, though. Let's check in with Jim Cam Sistis. He is the chairman and CEO of Dane Incorporated to get a better read of the situation. Mr. Kim Sistis, welcome to Mad Money. Well, thank you. Good thank to, you for the privilege of your time. You. Thank now, you. Now, when people look at Dana, they uh, may think that it makes auto parts. Yeah. The fact is, I more associate you with machinery and with trucks and with electrification yeah. because that's the future. It is. It is. Thanks, Jim, for having me. Uh, it is what, you know, a light vehicle, as we call it, is certainly a core piece of our business right. in the truck business only. We do large SUV and trucks only, but in the commercial vehicle, it's medium duty, it's uh, class eight, vocational, cement mixers, you name it. And then in off highway, it's agriculture, it's construction, it's underground mining, it's material handling. And the benefit for us is, is all our technologies, they're pretty much interchangeable across markets, across um, geographies, so on and so forth. So a lot of people maybe don't associate it with us, but it's a very very core and important part of our business. Now, it's very key, very crucial to understand that a lot of companies that are in the vehicle business have no real expertise in what you do and would rather have you do it than them do it. Yeah, I mean, history would tell us that they do some of everything we do right. to a degree, but at the end of the day, they, to be able to scale or scale across, we're very committed to technology, we're very committed to global footprint, we're very committed to relationships with customers, and they come to us and say, hey, look, we can't do everything for everybody, just like we can as a company, and we selectively look for the right pockets, and traditionally, you know, large truck and, and commercial truck and off-highway off is a perfect fit. Hey, take this, run with us, let's go sell a bunch of vehicles together, and that's what we do. Well, it's it's also clear that let's say I'm one of these manufacturers and I say, look, I have internal combustion engine, but I really want to be also in electronic vehicles. That's where we're yeah. going. You're agnostic. Yeah, I was super proud of it. You know, in 2016, there's a lot of people that may not have bet on it, but I can tell you we were all in. We saw it because there were pull through markets that were happening then, right? Bus market, regional or geographical markets such as China, all kinds of places were already there. And you could see the fundamentals behind it. So we said, look, we are not going to be, you know, kind of a melting iceberg here. We are going to see this opportunity. Yeah, axles are going to stay around forever, no doubt about it. But here's an opportunity for Dana to do really three times content per vehicle because now we have complete in-house motors, inverters, and then the thermal management that surrounds it, which is very core in electrification. So frankly, no matter which customer in any of those own mar and markets you and I just talked about, no matter what they come from, we can give that full system capability and let's go. We'll get it done. Now, I see a company that's triumphed over a lot of different supply chains, semiconductors, really got yeah. there. And yet now I'm listening to this fellow who runs the UAW. And he's using kind of fiery rhetoric that tells me that he seems to believe that his team wants to strike. Okay, it's September 14th. Now, we don't know. Anything can happen. Uh, they want a lot of money from the auto companies. Mm -hmm. But how impacted would you be if the auto companies got hit by a UAW strike? Yeah, I mean, anybody's going to be impacted if you sell to them. But I guess amongst many things in our business model that we've already talked about is when you isolate that down, that's the United States of America. That's just the light vehicle business. You know, we're almost an $11 billion company right now, and we're spread across all these end markets, all these geographies, so on and so forth. So it's significantly less than 50%. We can tell you that much. All right. I, I got to ask you this because it's the biggest polluter in the world. What do, do you think it's possible that we're going to have hydrogen trucks? And would you be play a role in trying to make it so trucks aren't so dirty? Uh, I, I am bullish. I am bullish on hydrogen trucks. I, again, I can see by your look that maybe that's a little bit surprising. No, I'm but look, no, we, no, because we, Lindy tells us it could happen. They're the biggest. Who knows, right? For sure. I mean, the, all these greens, you've got to keep your kind of your toe in the water on all the new green technologies to make sure that you're ready. But the most important thing for us, but getting back to that, 
no matter if it's green hydrogen, if it's electrification battery, our propulsion systems, they fit with all of them. They all interconnect. It does not matter. However, more specific to your question, will we participate in that? We actually do hydrogen fuel cell plates, which go inside the membranes of plates for commercial vehicles, and we'll be ramping up volume pretty significantly in the back half of this year. So you can see what we've done is we've re-engineered the company. The people in the company that used to do sealing and gaskets and thermal management said, wait a minute, that's the same skill set. You need to do hydrogen fuel cells. Why wouldn't we go address that market? Well, I think, look, you're way ahead. I think well, the only, my fear is that you're way ahead of the industry. But I also know you're exactly where you have to be, particularly with the regulation worldwide. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this is a very exciting time to work at Dane. And I'm really glad you came on because we're getting that, that great quarter for free because the stocks come down. Yeah. And yet I see great things for what your company's well, doing. Well, thank you so much. We're, Absolutely. We're proud to be here. I mean, you should be. Okay, that's Jim Kim Siskis. He's the chairman and CEO of Dana. It's a real easy symbol. It's Dan. Bad Money's back into the break. There thank you. you. Thank you. Coming up, Kramer wants to hear from you. Your calls on the thunderous lightning round, next.